today we are going to discuss about Attic pottery in ancient Thrace. And this is going to be done through the project Attic Pot that we just uh, completed. Before we start seeing the project and what it did in terms of uh, the Attic uh, pottery that was found in uh, ancient Thrace, imported uh, here, we should keep refresh our uh, memory and keep some things in our uh, mind. Uh, it is very well known, first of all, that uh, Attic pottery made a great popularity during the six, uh, from the sixth until the fourth century BC with exports throughout Mediterranean and Eftsinus Pontus. We know also very well that ancient Thrace was among the regions that Attic phases were imported systematically, at least from a certain uh, point afterwards and for a long period. We should not forget that pottery is one of the commonest and most numerous findings of excavations. That means that pottery is always a guide in the archaeological research and knowledge in order to learn about the past. In classical archaeology, the study of pottery, and especially the Attic pottery, which is the most well-studied uh, category of uh, pottery, contributes greatly not only to pottery studies, but also to other aspects of ancient life. So we use pottery in order to learn about public and private life, to learn about life and death, rituals, festivals, economy, trade, communication, just to refer to some aspects of life that pottery help us to uh, learn uh, about. Uh, and this is because, of course, everything, uh, or at least most of the objects, were uh, made by uh, clay. So new methods for the study of ancient Greek pottery offered nowadays by information and communication technologies, and we see them to be applied more and more often in the archaeological research. So we have the application of more interdisciplinary tools, meaning that we have the traditional tools we used in the archaeology, but we complement them with uh, the tools offered by uh, the ICT. And uh, uh, pottery studies is not uh, exception. So uh, with these interdisciplinary uh, tools and approaches, we try to advance the field of pottery studies from various innovative perspectives. Uh, another point that's uh, very interesting is that the past decades, there is a shift from traditional studies to projects based on digital technologies. Attic pot is one of them. Contains repository, maps, timeline, collection, statistics. We'll talk about that uh, very soon. And what we're going to see here today, its contribution through this uh, interdisciplinary approach, its contribution to the present and future of Attic pottery studies. So as for Attic pottery in ancient Thrace, uh, we should know that one of the primary uh, axes is, uh, uh, I'm always talking about Attic pot, is our Greeks and Thracians. The aspect of Thrace in Athens is something that was well studied through various studies for uh, many decades now, because we know the presence of Thracians in Thrace itself. Uh, they lived there. We know, for example, that Pisistratus probably brought some with him um, uh, while he was in exile up here. We know the popularity of uh, Thracian myths uh, on Athenian uh, iconography, but Athens in Thrace is not that well known. Of course, we have um, uh, information from the literary sources about different historical events, relations, alliances, uh, hostilities, uh, but not in all the aspects. A Pikie play Greek Apikie in uh, the Thracian territory, Aegean Thrace, and of course, uh, the coast of uh, Eftimus Pontus, Black Sea, played a very important role. Uh, in the area, there were also hospitable harbors. 
Ramos, which could really um, uh, host uh, and receive uh, objects and imports from various places, among of which were also the attic pottery. And of course, we know that several networks uh, function in the area. Another important aspect uh, is the consumption of the attic pottery in the region. Who, uh, by whom, and why? And of course, through the attic pottery uh, in the area, we can get information about cultural interchanges. And those are just a few aspects uh, that we can get uh, information. So uh, based on all that, uh, it was developed the uh, Attic Pot project uh, that uh, lasted from 2018 till 2022, uh, just uh, completed two months uh, ago. Uh, it belongs to digital archaeology. Uh, its name is Attic Pottery in Trace, therefore Attic Pot. And it was a collaboration between uh, our uh, research uh, center, Athena Research Center, the Democritus University of Thrace, and the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. And its goal was to uh, study the diffusion of Attic painted pottery in ancient Thrace from the 6th until the 4th century BC. So the area ancient Thrace uh, in modern time, times means that it's a geographical uh, region that extends between Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, and Romania, with all the consequences and implications uh, of that. So uh, the project focus is the Attic pottery, which is a dominant type of imports in the area. And uh, it can be uh, seen through various perspectives. However, the focus is not the attic pottery per se. It's not just to collect uh, and create a database and see there were that many uh, number uh, of uh, attic fields. Uh, of our interest uh, are the patterns, use and presence of pottery, and of course, the interrelations of Thracians and Greece. And as we said before, economy, cultural interchanges, uh, society, and the formation of the cultural physiognomy of the region. Uh, the digital tools were our primary tools in this uh, research. Uh, and because that way it would be inclusive, the entire international academic community, and the digital tools provide us with networking possibilities. So, uh, Let's see how the information and communication technologies played a role in Attic Pot studies and, of course, in Attic Pot itself. Attic Pot was not created from nothing. Uh, there were several projects that uh, helped us to uh, uh, build uh, ours, and of, we based a lot upon them. Of course, the primary one, the, the principal, is the Beasley Archive Pottery Database, which was uh, the first um, uh, source we uh, used in order to find uh, Attic vases in ancient uh, phrase. Uh, but at the same time, it is a database. Uh, CVA Online was another resource and project that gave us different uh, uh, ideas, very useful. Uh, same thing with the Levantine Ceramics Project. And here you see just a table of um, several uh, elements that we were looking for and the previous projects had or didn't have, and we tried to incorporate them in Attic Pot. So after we hear about all that, let's see the Attic Pot itself. The Attic Pot, deals with an archaeological context. So what we want to see is, uh, uh, and what we realize by collecting uh, the vases dispersed in ancient trace, is the importance of attic painted pottery. And what we realize is that is distributed and it's imported in the region in really 
large numbers. We see that, uh, uh, again, through the archaeological context, there is a large interest in ancient Thrace. And as we said, this is today, the region is divided among four uh, countries. And that means we have different languages and different contexts. And here I should specify that the Attic pot collects only Attic painted pottery. So black lace is not included. Uh, what, we, uh, uh, what we collect are black figure, red figure, white ground, six technique, coral red, but always has to be painted. Uh, and another uh, important element is that Attic pot collects only published material. So that means that uh, uh, despite how many um, uh, vases we have uh, collected in the repository, uh, undoubtedly there are many more uh, which are not published and they are not, of course, uh, included. The main questions when we started our research were the diffusion and production of Attic painted pottery and the relations of Athens and Thrace. Uh, based on that, we start uh, the uh, aggregation of uh, the pottery. And of course, we started, I told you already about the Bisley uh, pottery database. And then we uh, proceeded with printed records, um, books, uh, proceedings, reports, theses, catalogs, different types of published material. And uh, we uh, had to face the language limitations. And we had to see that there were various contexts, different collections, and different countries. And from country to country, uh, the uh, publication uh, record was different. In some uh, cases, we have more publications. In other cases, we have less publications. And of course, that has to do with the site. And another issue is that in many cases, uh, many sites are not well excavated so far. And of course, we have the digital records, as is the Beasley uh, archive, but other digital sources, which were easier to uh, access and uh, collect the basis from there. From this data harvesting, uh, they were formulated uh, new data sets. The most important one, is uh, the data set with uh, the attic uh, uh, painted uh, pottery, which counts at this point more than 5,200 uh, vases. And for those 500, 2,000 vases, there are more than 7,900 bibliographic entries. And uh, those records, uh, the information in the repository is uh, bilingual uh, in Greek and uh, English. As uh, you can see uh, here, uh, the records, uh, and you see here the list, not a record itself, but a list uh, as it uh, appears, uh, uh, someone can browse, search, sort, and export information about those uh, records in Excel or PDF and get several uh, lists of uh, the collected material. Uh, apart from the uh, vases themselves, uh, there is also there are also the references in the vases and we can get uh, a total uh, bibliography. Uh, there are, so far, there are more than 1,430 publications uh, collected in the repository. And those publications belong again to those, uh, to uh, Greeks, uh, uh, publications made by uh, Greek, uh, Turkish, Bulgarian, Romanian scholars, but of course, other scholars uh, from other countries. Uh, and Many of them are in English, in French, in German, Italian, uh, etc. An important tool of uh, uh, Attic Pot, apart from the repository, which I saw, is the map, the geographical feature. Because what we have to do is with 
temporal spatial uh, uh, framework. So as for the uh, space, a, a map facilitates uh, our uh, work and the information we gather and uh, can uh, see and uh, uh, study afterwards, uh, which uh, give us information about the provenance and the coordinates. So uh, the map is an interactive map connected to the repository and give us information about the location, the site, the region, and the country. Uh, up to date, uh, it, they have been collected, uh, collect, uh, collected 20, 205 sites where Attic pottery was found. And I, again, I repeat that this has to do with published uh, pottery. Uh, and of course, we didn't uh, exhaust it every single publication. You can see here a distribution map of those 205 uh, sites where Attic pottery was exported in ancient uh, Thrace. And you can see the different uh, areas. So you can see that there are uh, in uh, 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 coastal uh, sites, but also uh, inland. The gaps you see in this uh, uh, map uh, might indicate that either that there are not enough publications for sites that there are in between, or we might didn't locate all of them, or that many in many cases they are not excavated uh, well enough so far. So we use different filters in the map in order to see what's, how uh, the vases are categorized according to shape, to painter, to potter, or decoration uh, technique. Great help to uh, hear, especially during the pandemic, uh, a, a period that we were not able to uh, go to the libraries and do our research. And we were not able also to take trips because we had planned to take trips in various countries, in Bulgaria and in Turkey, for example, uh, but we were not able to do that due to the uh, lockdown. So great help uh, was, uh, to a certain extent, for the Aegean uh, Thrace, the ARENA uh, project, the previous project, that collects the bibliography for the archaeological research that has taken part in the area. Uh, we spoke about the map the space, but there is also the time, and the timeline plays an important role. One of the uh, very interesting challenges here was the time, the type of uh, the chronology. So there is the conventional archaeological uh, chronology, and here it is, uh, where we will fill this field, and could be mid fifth century. Uh, second quarter of the sixth century, or uh, first half, second half. But the machines, digital uh, technologies, do not understand what that means. And that would, was going to be an important barrier uh, for our research. So what we did is that we actually translate for uh, the informatics the chronology to the chronology of Attic Pot. So here, uh, everything that when we feel something here, it gives um, the correspondence to which century that would be if we want, uh, and we choose the century, the quarter, the half, and all that in order for um, during the uh, search to collect all the vases that belong to that period we're interested in. And of course, um, uh, the platform has a time uh, line uh, where we can see in the different uh, periods and uh, spaces uh, the number of uh, attic phases found uh, there. There are also some advanced research tools that they were developed. So uh, the researcher is uh, able to uh, create collections uh, let's say I'm interested to see uh, how many um, 
lekithoi or caps exist or how many to see the material that was found in Thassos. I can create a collection and I can store this collection and have a list of my favorites, my collections, in order to proceed with their study later uh, on. Uh, and of course, uh, the search uh, has different uh, advantages. We can have combination uh, of different uh, elements, decoration, uh, presence of metalware, um, iconography um, or uh, technique, uh, painter, potter. We can add as many as we wish here and get the results. For example, in this uh, uh, query, uh, we search for vases that come from centuries from Aegean trays and six different areas. Uh, for whoever reads Greek, we'll see that we have in the area of Evros, Samothrace, Kavala, Thassos, Xanthi, Rodopi, uh, Ceres, the whole uh, area of those. And uh, they date in the sixth century BC. Uh, so we can have the correlation between two criteria, features of vases, and we can have total of vases or collections. So we can choose a collection and search through this collection, or we can search through the entire uh, repository. Uh, and of course, we can uh, see the uh, results of our uh, search, and uh, we can get um, statistics and we can uh, export them in Excel uh, and graphs. So after we did all that, and after, since we collected those uh, 5,250 uh, faces, what are the, some remarks that we can uh, see. Uh, as regards the sales, one of the major questions uh, from the beginning during this chronological period from the 6th until the 4th century BC. Excuse me. As you can see, we see that Crater, Lekithos, and Kilix seem to be the most popular sales. And actually, I would say that. Uh, it's difficult to say if Crater of Lekithos is most popular because uh, some time ago, Lekithoi were a little bit uh, higher in number than uh, Craters, but definitely those two are the most popular with caps, Kilkes to follow. What's interesting about the Kilkes is that uh, they, uh, they meet uh, they, they, they are met in uh, great numbers uh, during the 6th century BC, but their number decreases in the next centuries. Skifos uh, takes over uh, them in the 5th century and later on. And here I should mention that um, if you notice, we don't have many cantharoid, but as I said uh, at the beginning, what we collect are the painted, uh, is the painted pottery. So, uh, especially in the fourth century BC, we have numerous black laced cantharoid. So, as for the uh, those drinking uh, vessels, uh, black lays uh, get really great numbers from the fifth century onward. Now, lekithoi, I found the, the lekithoi are mostly found in cemeteries. Caps are mostly found in sanctuaries. And what is of interest uh, of this published material is that most of the craters come from an unknown context. We might know that the crater comes, for example, from, uh, uh, I would say, um, Amphipolis or Maronia or whatever, but we don't know the exact context that uh, was found. So as you can see in this um, uh, graph uh, here, uh, the majority of the craters come from unknown context with cemeteries to follow and sanctuaries to be third. But that might change if we get more information about the context of the unknown so far uh, vessels. And in this graph, you see that there was a combination in the sets. It was Crater, and <coughs> then we had to find 
the, the context, the different types of um, uh, finding places, and the data. And you can see in the map uh, how the craters are distributed in different uh, areas. Uh, each cycle doesn't mean that it has only one site, it could be in more uh, sites, and you see also uh, numbers. Uh, as you see here in this uh, graph, uh, the distribution of craters, again, we have selected uh, sites, the most uh, popular for uh, creators, you see that Argilos and Enos uh, have great uh, numbers. Uh, Apollonia has significant numbers as well. Uh, Thassos, uh, Mesimbria and Zoni, uh, and Pistiros um, in Veteran also has really significant numbers. Uh, what I would keep is that Apollonia, Enos, Thassos, Pistiros, uh, which apparently uh, function also as hubs for distribution of uh, the imports to other areas as well. Another uh, aspect that we would like to investigate was the iconography. So since we uh, collect uh, painted pottery, the question was, Okay, and how are they are painted? What are the, uh, what's their decoration? So uh, what's really interesting here, okay, uh, forget the first uh, column, which is undetermined. We, we don't really know what was uh, depicted uh, there, just a few uh, that's little fragments preserved. Uh, the majority, great number, uh, carries floral decoration, then follows the decorative uh, motif, with the animals to be the third. As for figural decoration, uh, what is the most popular is the cycle of Dionysus. Then we have daily scenes like observation, conversation or uh, domestic uh, scenes. Uh, in between, there are mythical uh, creatures. Uh, we might have uh, warriors. Uh, the second deity is uh, Aphrodite, but that takes us to late classical. Uh, and I will remind you late fifth century uh, and afterwards when Aphrodite and her cycle is very popular on uh, Athenian uh, vase uh, painting. Or we can have heads and chariots. That, I think, tell, gives us a signal about uh, the uh, preferences. And the first signal we get, if we compare that with uh, the shapes, is that the shapes played an important role. Iconography maybe was not that important. Uh, let's take as an example uh, the cycle of Dionysus, the most popular figural uh, theme in uh, the uh, Attic pottery, uh, exported or imported, depends on uh, from which uh, side someone uh, looks at that, uh, in ancient Greece. So we see the map here with the distribution of uh, the, the Dionysus iconography. We see here the uh, shapes, and we see that uh, crater and kilix are uh, the most popular. And I forgot to mention here that as for floral decoration and the decorative motif, uh, here the shape that's most popular with this type of decoration are lekithoi. Uh, the cycle of Dionysus is found on uh, tabs and craters as uh, we see here uh, as well. Uh, as uh, for the chronological distribution, we can see in this uh, graph, uh, sixth century is in uh, blue, fifth century in green, and the yellow is the fourth century. And we can see the different context. Again, it's interesting that in the case of uh, as in the case with the craters, uh, we have a large number without uh, known uh, context. A third 
aspect in our research was uh, to see what happens with painters. And again, what we have here is uh, we collect uh, five uh, vases that, uh, uh, excuse me, painters that have uh, been uh, represented by more than 10 decorated uh, vases. So there are many more painters, but so far we have less than 10 numbers, uh, 10, 10 vases in uh, our repository. Fat Point Group appears to be very popular. Uh, something that's expected uh, because we see uh, them uh, everywhere. But I would point out also the existence uh, of Lidos, uh, and that takes us to the black figure, an important black figure, painters, Polos painter or um, uh, sea painter. Uh, we have the Heidelberg painter, and we should mention that, but with not really large numbers, there are works of Amasis painter or Exegias, and we also have Berlin painter in uh, some cases. As for the context and the centuries, this is the distribution of the published painted attic pottery so far. As for the symmetrics, you see that there are uh, many more, most uh, more numerous than the centuries. But uh, he, and here is a list of uh, the up-to-date symmetrics. But we should keep in our mind that uh, many more symmetries, uh, many more grades are published uh, in general and excavated as well than sanctuaries. And of course, the sanctuaries uh, have to be less than the symmetries. Uh, what's really problematic so far is that we don't really have uh, many uh, published many uh, settlement uh, context. And this is something that we hope that soon uh, we'll get some publications uh, there. And uh, let's see a little bit what um, uh, is, which is the image uh, we get from uh, the Attic Pot Repository regarding the part of ancient Thrace that belongs to modern Bulgaria. This is the distribution, uh, the geographical distribution in the different uh, sites. And here is a, a list of the sites that have been uh, located so far. As for the shapes, the dating, and their context, uh, here we see Lekithos to uh, be the most uh, popular with greater and Skiffos to follow. And if we look here, for example, Kilix is very low in percentage comparatively to the entire uh, region. But this is something that can be explained if we look at the other two uh, graphs. So first is the uh, location, the context. And here we have the majority come from symmetries. Uh, a big problem are the uh, unpublished, the unknown, uh, the unknown uh, context. Uh, we don't know exactly what, uh, where, which context they come from. Uh, but centuries, uh, Emporium and centuries follow. And as for the time period, we see that the majority, more than half of uh, the Attic vases found um, in uh, the region of modern Bulgaria, the ancient trails that corresponds to modern Bulgaria, uh, date to the fourth century BC. That has to do uh, with the fact that uh, during the sixth and great part of the fifth century BC, we have them in the Apikia. Polonia Pontica has very early examples, but inland they appear to be imported in later periods. And also, as for Lekithoi, uh, which in general are very popular during the fourth century BC, you can find them in great numbers all over ancient Thrace. Lekithoi, as we said, 
uh, before was the most popular uh, uh, attic uh, shape found in graves. So this, this, and this, uh, if we combine them together, can give us some answers to why those shapes, that dating, and that context. As for craters, since, and this is, that was chosen because craters was the um, example that we saw before, we see a distribution again in various uh, places. So we have a great distribution of uh, craters. And uh, we have, uh, as for their iconography, the floral and decorative pattern are the most popular. And this is very interesting. That it takes us again uh, to the thought that iconography maybe didn't matter, but shape did. And as for the cycle of Dionysus, it's not just that. You have to see that in many uh, cases where we can have conversations in, we might have also something uh, uh, from the uh, Dionysus circle uh, here. So Dionysus is also popular on the basis found uh, distributed in the area uh, of uh, Bulgaria. And uh, what's interesting about the painters, you see again the fat boy group. So it follows the same uh, trends. There are different other uh, painters. But what was interesting here while we were looking um, on this specific region was that the majority of the vases are not attributed so far uh, to specific uh, painters and potters. So we cannot actually have um, very uh, good statistics uh, here. Another uh, issue that we could locate through the material collected in the repository are the different networks. And here, as an example, uh, we chose the fourth century Lakeford. And as you can see, it seems that there are specific axis of distribution. So you can see the areas they are found, the fourth century, very popular, and they seem to follow certain axes. Similar distribution regarding mostly the coastal places, we see for air shapes. And what's of interest here is that rare shapes occur in uh, Pistirus veteran, where uh, which apparently was a hub, a redistribution uh, center for pottery that arrived there and then was uh, sent to other places. Similar role of a uh, hub uh, had, as we already said, uh, Apollonia Pontica, uh, Enos, Thassos, of course, and you can see here really concentration of many uh, rare uh, shapes. The map that we saw before with the fourth century uh, BC Lekithoi uh, and the distribution of uh, the pottery takes us interestingly to the Roman roads as they are presented in um, uh, the Barrington uh, Atlas. And here you see a combination of uh, uh, at what maps the and the Asian world mapping uh, center with the different uh, uh, later uh, roads. So some general remarks we could make uh, on uh, from the collection and the first uh, uh, work done on the study of the Attic pottery in ancient Thrace, and those could be uh, issues that uh, we could discuss together. So we see that craters from Aegean Thrace appear to be first at major centers and the primary colonies. Uh, and they are uh, usually of good quality. Pelike are not as frequently found. Uh, uh, and when they are found, they are mostly found in funerary uh, context. It's also of interest, but what we saw is that 
Delicate becomes a popular shape in the first half of the fourth century as burial gift. As concerns the Black Sea uh, area, we see again craters to play an important role, and they appear first at Apollonia, Pontica, and Mesivria. From the fifth, mid fifth century onwards, they become and appear more frequently in other areas and inland. Uh, a question that was raised looking at the dates and the distribution of the quantities and the pottery was if this increase of imports in the Thracian inland was related to uh, the relations uh, the Athenians had with the Odrysian uh, kingdom under specific uh, kings. Uh, we see also we see also some uh, interesting trends during uh, the time and some adaptations in local preferences and traditions. So we see that uh, Dionysus and Hestiasus, the symbolic themes and the female sphere, uh, seem to be the most popular iconographic themes. Uh, we see that it is from the 5th century BC, the Attic painted pots were uh, dispersed from the Greek colonies to the inland. And uh, by the mid 4th century BC, uh, the Attic vases were adopted by a larger social basis. And at that point, we see them in also in Thracian uh, burials. Among the general remarks we can make is uh, about some uh, painters they are found in uh, the area. So we see some black figure painters, the sea painter, Heidelberg painter, Hemon painter, Polos, Lidos, and we can see also a few works of Sophilos or Exitias. We have many more red figure uh, painters, such as the Berlin, the Cleophon painter, the Pilios painter, uh, the circle of Pronomus painter, Achilles painter, Eretria painter, Black Thesis painter, which is very uh, popular, and of course, the fat boy group. What's interesting looking at the iconography, it's not only what we said before, that not that many figural scenes, but we have very limited depictions of Thracians, of Scythians, <coughs> of Amazons, of mythological figures considered to be Thracians, such as Orpheus and general local figures, which are popular in Athenian vase painting, but they are found on other uh, on the export of the vases in other uh, areas. The most popular topics, as we said, are the Dionysian scenes, members of Theosos and warriors, and in the fourth century, the women's work. But that. Uh, is in alignment with the general trend in Athenian uh, vase painting. Uh, another uh, interesting observation was that we don't really have erotic imagery, and we exclude here the Aphrodite and her uh, sire. As for local representations, we have very limited depictions of Thracians and Thracian myths, as we said. Those two Max from Carnobat and uh, Apollonia are exceptions, and uh, actually uh, they were probably orders because they uh, are also uh, productions of local uh, shapes. Among the very uh, rare uh, depictions we have of Thracian myths uh, uh, founded in Thrace is this uh, Hydria. Uh, uh, depicting uh, warriors chasing, raping um, uh, Orithia. And that was found in uh, Zoni uh, outside Alexandropolis. But again, that's one of the rare uh, occasions we have uh, a topic like that. Uh, so um, to conclude, we realized that uh, there is a change of the centers importing Attic painted pottery uh, over time. We have, however, main routes of dispersal. We have from Aegean coast of Thrace inland or later on through the Black Sea colonies. We have preferences for certain shapes and 
after the Persian Wars, we have an increase of Attic uh, exports towards the Black Sea colonies. And here, a question is raised um, automatically. Uh, do we have local workshops producing vases that imitate uh, Attic pottery? This is something that's not well studied so far, but while uh, the numbers of the published pottery um, uh, increase, uh, and pottery that was uh, characterized before easily Attic appears not to be Attic, but maybe produced somewhere locally. I would remind you that we already know um, that in Thassos there was a, a workshop producing black figure uh, pottery, uh, pottery alike to the Athenian uh, pottery. We have in Halkidiki that figure uh, pottery, in Pella uh, as well, and many other places. And uh, more recently in Apollonia, Pontica, uh, there are indications that maybe some of the uh, so far characterized Attic pottery was probably produced somewhere locally. Uh, we, I don't know if we can talk about imitation because in many cases that could be done by Attic uh, vase painters who moved in the area or by locals who were trained by uh, Athenian uh, vase uh, painters or in Athenian pottery workshops. Uh, but again, we get that way into relations and connections and influences uh, and cultural interchanges. So uh, the remarks that we made uh, by completing uh, the Attic project actually is not an end, but a new beginning. So uh, with the material accumulated in the repository, we uh, think that we have um, a tool to study uh, the Attic painted pottery in ancient trace in order to be able to answer archeological research questions. Uh, during the project, several workshops took place. Um, a volume that you see on the screen was just uh, published and different uh, articles have been published as well. And because everything is uh, people, uh, the Attic pot uh, is comprised by a great team from these different uh, disciplines. And we work all together uh, in order to accomplish the goals of our project, which hopefully will be continued. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Despina, for this uh, incredible presentation of this extremely uh, useful and well done project. I mean, uh, congratulations on, on uh, all of this work which has been done. And actually, it's amazing because um, this is uh, an access to a new world, I would say, for everyone who would like to uh, do research now um, in in the pottery, in the ancient uh, Greek pottery in Trace, this will be uh, a way to continue in much easier way than before when we had to search um, everything in books uh, and articles. Well, I would like to uh, welcome, uh, to invite all of you who have uh, questions and comments to put them in the chat and we can start the discussion. So we have um, the first one from Matthew Schuller. Uh, yes. Hi, Matthew. Matthew. Hi, Matt. How are you? <laughs> Good. Well, Matt, if, you, if you want, you can just um, read your question. Please go ahead, Matt. Oh, yes. Well, I just thank you very much. And Yasas, it's very nice to see you again. Um, I just had a quick question. This, this looks like a very valuable tool. I'm very excited. Just very, so thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. Uh, one minor question. Um, among the database, are there any instances of graffiti? Um, and if so, what do they say? Yes, actually, yes. And that was one of the favorites, one of the collections, because a colleague studies them and she has created a favorite collection of them. And in uh, the volume that was just published, there is a chapter on uh, those. Uh, so uh, there are different types of graffiti, not that many. 
um, um, I would say around 200 or something so far. Uh, but yes, uh, but yes, there are. Uh, in some cases, they might be, you know, all those nonsense inscriptions. Uh, so we cannot really see that they say uh, something. Uh, in other cases, we might have, you know, a Kalos name or just a word or something. So uh, it's not that they are focused. Um, and uh, they, to those uh, uh, are not count uh, the ones found in, in Zoni in the sanctuary of Apollo, because those are in black glazed fragments and we didn't know if they were painted or not. So we didn't uh, uh, count them. Uh, but yes, there are, there are. And they come from different places as well. So it's not that there is a pattern. Thank you very much. Ah, there are also some from Parthenos, the sanctuary of Parthenos with Parthenos. So depends on the context. Thank you. Thank you very much for the response. And we have another question by uh, Carol Schneier. How complete does a pot have to be to be entered into attic pot? For example, whole pots only, fragments, fragments from the same pot? Very good question, because that was one of the matters that puzzled us from the beginning. No, there are not only whole pots. We would be really, uh, I think, very lucky to have more than 5,000 intact uh, pots. Uh, they have to preserve part of painted decoration. So we have many fragments, the majority are fragments, but they preserve some part of decoration. So it's an indication that they were painted and we can enter them in uh, the repository. Uh, the fragments from the same pot count as one. They are entering the same uh, record. Well, thank you. Then we have the next question by Bogdan Atanasov, our colleague from New Bulgaria University. Thank you very much for the presentation of this fantastic and very informative project. Could you tell us something more about uh, differences between the uh, littorials, Aegean and Black Sea, and um, the Balkan inland? So I uh, can... okay, hmm? because the question continues, let's, let's uh, start with this first part. Okay. And then read. Uh, uh, I, I already mentioned some uh, basic uh, uh, differences and some uh, similarities. Uh, the chronology, the numbers, uh, uh, the uh, variety in shapes, uh, it's something that really uh, is something obvious. Of course, this is something that needs really further uh, study and research, and someone has to work on that and get some uh, conclusions. Uh, but uh, we have, for example, from inland uh, Thrace in some um, uh, local burials, uh, Thracian burials, we have the presence of uh, Attic pottery. And it seems that uh, they were used by uh, the uh, elite. But as I said, this is a topic that needs really uh, more study uh, there. Well, okay, then the question continues. Thank you. Uh, were, uh, were local elites creative in the choice of vessels and shapes, or did they simply get what the, the cost of settlement offered to them? Mm, very good question. Uh, again, I will say that it's really further work and study that, but uh, at the first glimpse, what we can say is that since the published information we have about the local elites comes from burials, we have Lekithoi, and it makes sense, okay? But this is something that we see in other places. And then crater is very popular, but that again is, uh, it makes sense because uh, communal drinking and wine consumption is very popular. And as for the craters and the uh, drinking vessels in general, we should not forget something important regarding uh, Thrace. They had many metal bases. 
and doesn't matter how many of them uh, are preserved nowadays, definitely they had them and they could afford them. So someone has to see that also in comparison with metal bases and go deeper there. This will be very interesting because if you compare also the inventory of the of the tombs, for example, like uh, the high number of metal vessels preserved there and the relatively the small number of of uh, attic pottery inside is also impressive. And probably if if you compare the chronology here, we are going to find some differences as well. Mm, well, okay. Then uh, Bogdan has another question. Do you see differences, shapes, decorations between Aegean and Black Sea colonies? Are, are they indication of adaption of pottery repertoire? Wasn't in... that the one I just answered? Sorry? Uh, Wasn't that the difference in shapes? Uh, decorations between Aegean and Black Sea colonies. Poly, poly. Yes, but uh, that, was, that was the one I just answered. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Is it another one? Yes. I mean, uh, would one. you consider also routes through the Rudolph ah, okay, uh, Mountains right, yeah. uh, connecting veteran with the North um, Aegean sites? Of course. It's here, of here. Course. If you allow of me, yes, if you yes. allow me, I would just want to add that <clears throat> actually I'm a prehistoric archaeologist, so I have no idea of, of the period, and I just got infected by uh, the quite interesting information you presented, but mm -hmm. I have worked a little bit in the Rhodopian Bronze Age site, and I see that the connections through the mountains are much more intensive than the connections through the river valleys, which is, uh, of course, it's not very logical, but it's for prehistory, it's definitely the case. That's why I came to this uh, question. It is logical, though. Uh, we see definitely there were connections through the uh, Rodopi Mountains, and definitely veteran uh, got the material from Rodopi and Aegean Thrace, and not from the Black Sea, uh, and then redistributed uh, from there. But veteran is nearby Evros, and Evros was used as a route. Strimon was also used as a route, but not Nestos but they were roads. I mean, okay, the harbors and all that, and that was very convenient. And definitely they first arrived in harbors. If you see that the uh, Attic pottery left uh, Piraeus, uh, they used definitely the harbor and they didn't use uh, roads uh, inland. Uh, but then uh, it was distributed through various uh, ways from the roads they had there. And we know from Thucydides that there were roads inland and actually Thucydides uh, describes and tell us how many days they would need to walk or by horse or whatever to go from one place to another. So yes, there were, we know that. They are, and also the Pisteros excavations, uh, excavators, they have the theory that a lot of the, mm, the stuff which was um, imported into the Emporium came through the mountains, not only through the river. This is a question of further research and it is very interesting. It is very, very interesting. Of course, we cannot know. And the other thing is that don't forget that we find the bases in the last place and use. It yeah. doesn't mean that was the only one after they left the pottery workshop. It doesn't mean that they ended directly to the grave, to the sanctuary, to the house, or to that site. We don't really know about that. Well, we know the first and the last. And for the first, we have questions nowadays if they are all attic or if they are, some of them uh, were produced somewhere uh, uh, locally. Yes, and it's, there are also many examples with repairs. So we talk about a longer period of use. Also in Pistiros, not only, I mean, you know that we don't have necropolis yet discovered, but still in uh, contexts uh, in, the, in the settlement, we have bases with repairments. So, okay. And then... I, I, think, I think that's why I uh, was, uh, that what I said, that this end is a beginning actually. Definitely. Uh, the, 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 the work just starts. Just to collect is 
the initial phase, but the work just starts now. But this is the background, what we need to have in order to do the research, because otherwise you know it better than I, how difficult it was to collect the material only. And then when you have it, you can really analyze it now. And that was the reason I gave you the number of the bibliographic references. Because, uh, eh, 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 I mean, if someone is a researcher, it's something that it's easy to understand. But it's not obvious to everybody that in order to collect them, someone has to go really to many different uh, publications and places and locate them. And as I said, those are only the published ones. I mean, we are aware of many, of thousands of unpublished ones, but we could not, of course, uh, include them. But it's, it's a good base to continue anyway. So let's hope that very soon you have the chance to increase that data. We hope so. Mm -hmm. And then um, another question by Carol Schneier. Do categories of iconography overlap? For example, if a warrior is, uh, is driving a chariot pulled by horses, would there be an, an entries and warrior and animal, for example? Uh, no. Uh, for this specific example, no. They will be uh, under warriors. And warriors could be either with horses or just with weapons or all this will be under warriors because this is how they categorize. When we have the category animals, that means that uh, it's a, an animal depicted or just this is the decoration of the vase. If it's a daily scene, for example, and the dog is included, that goes to daily scene. But you can search because it is searchable and you can search, for example, a um, dog or horse or whatever and find how many uh, there are there. Uh, if also in many cases in antiquity, uh, in many shapes, you have two different um, uh, uh, scenes on in the two uh, 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 sides of uh, the vase. Uh, those could go, it was the example I used with uh, Dionysus, that you could have Dionysus and on the other side you have a conversation scene. Uh, in this case, but it's not the double record, uh, it's one entry and the iconography is this and this. I don't know if I, if I uh, answer uh, the question. I hope yes. Okay. Yes, question to answer. A question answer. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, okay. So are there any other questions by the audience tonight? In the meanwhile, oh yes. Okay. There is another uh, question by Natalie Bishop. With the Dionysian scene being predominant, uh, do you know if the rites and cult of Dionysus were spread through trace or was it more in more interest in the mythology of Dionysus? Uh, very interesting question. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, this is something we work now and we want to prepare an article on, on the topic because we were also intrigued very much by that. Uh, we all know the relation despite of Dionysus with Thrace, despite uh, the fact uh, whether he was um, uh, Thrace was his origin place or not. Uh, definitely Dionysus was um, uh, had connections with the area. We know that in Mount Pangaeon there was a sanctuary of Dionysus. We know that from the literary sources. And also what I would point uh, out is that in, in Aegean Thrace at least we have um, uh, vine and wine production already from prehistoric times. So uh, wine and grapes and vines and Dionysus and everything has uh, plays an important role uh, in face. Uh, I don't know if the scenes, how much the scenes are related to that, but definitely they ring a bell. Uh, and maybe familiar. Uh, but we have, again, to, to work more uh, on that and have some uh, more stable remarks there. 
Well, probably also the the symposium, the ritual of symposium had something to do in that because also the collections or let's say the choice of vessels which we found in the tombs is talking about the fact that the symposium was pretty well known and practiced in Trace. Yeah, I don't know if it was symposium with the ancient Greek meaning of the term. Yes, That's why I used, yeah. I used the communal drinking and yeah. or ritual or something like that. Uh, but definitely a type of symposium, yes. Yes. Well, if, if you compare the selection of the of the shapes of vessels in the Thracian and Macedonian tombs from that time, they are very similar. So we speak about something, in my opinion, similar, especially in the time of Alexander and of Alexander the Great and after him. Uh, and since you mentioned Macedonia now, um, what uh, we have to say is that we have many similarities with the imports in Macedonia, but of course it's a neighboring yeah. region. It does, it's not a surpri surprise. And actually in uh, the volume we published, there is a chapter about Macedonia and the Attic imports there. And there is a chapter on the rest of Black Sea, which didn't belong to ancient Thrace, and to see what were the Attic imports there, because Black Sea was very popular uh, place for uh, Athenian exports. Great. Well, afterwards, you shall tell me how to order that book. But let's continue with, uh, with the questions. And we have another one by Carol Schneier. Have you done any analysis of potential uh, BS in Attic pot data? For example, are there uh, more uh, um, Attic vessels listed because Athenian pottery um, was more durable, perhaps due to clay use uh, or firing technique, and more likely to be preserved. Uh, uh, Attic pottery, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand co uh, quite uh, right the question, uh, but Attic pottery was very popular throughout Mediterranean. So Thrace was no exception. It's just part of the room. Uh, I don't know if it was more durable, but definitely it was a fine quality. Uh, it was uh, the decoration that def doesn't matter if they were not interested in the things. Uh, this type of decoration uh, didn't occur in local potteries and then I refer in other areas uh, as well. Uh, and uh, I don't think that it was um, better preserved than others because pottery is preserved. If you fire clay, you will get fragments uh, of that. Uh, and it's not uh, more numerous than uh, the local categories. It's something that's predominant among the imported categories. We should not forget that. In non places that the Attic vessels are more than the local, but the local are usually plain wear or more simple or like that. It's predominant comparatively to the other imports. Well, thank you. Um... Um, are there any more questions? Otherwise, I, I can ask something. Um, what is the future of the project? Ah, uh, good question. <laughs> For the moment, we have to finish with the bureaucracy of completing uh, it. Uh, but we hope that we will be able to continue it uh, uh, because it's a good uh, base and there are different directions we will can uh, expand. So there are some thoughts to uh, continue. Uh, therefore, I had at the end to be continued. So, yeah. And one of the things that we would like for the continuation is to proceed with broader collaborations uh, outside, uh, maybe outside Greece this time. This would be great. This would be great. I mean, I'm sure that there are going to be many researchers who will be willing to contribute to this database. Mm, well, okay, we have one more question. Uh, are digital images included in Attic pot entries? 
Uh, other digital images example given CAT scan? Uh, there are images, uh, but uh, due to the copyrights cannot be available. So yes, we have images because without images, we could not do uh, work, but this is something that cannot be uh, published and available because you all know very well that the copyrights is a very severe issue. So are you using the pictures from but the we have We oh. have bibliographic reference. Yeah. So someone can go and see that in the publication. And, and the pictures are taken from the publication which you have in or? I, I, I didn't right. understand. Are you using the pictures which are uh, published? Yes, 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 yes. of course. Yes. Of course, yeah. That was, that was the easiest way to to do it. Proceed. Yeah. I understand, yeah. of course. And, no. uh, for at this stage, we were not able to go and start, you know, looking for photographs and asking permissions and all that. Uh, that would really eliminate the project. We wouldn't really. Uh, no, it's an enormous amount of work anyway. I mean, uh, this is like a couple of dissertations and one, <laughs> one place yeah. out. And exactly. And, and for, for our purposes, that was not uh, essential. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. Uh, well, the question continues. Are the pictures uh, analyzed by researchers or by computer analyzers? Uh, at this point, by researchers, because uh, it's not the, the images that they are analyzed, it's the, the record, the information, the written information. And uh, then we work with the images uh, because we don't really have so many images of every uh, vessel, okay? We have basic uh, uh, depictions uh, that they were found in the publications uh, that we uh, uh, used. And they're not always, you know, they don't always preserve everything. Okay. Now, uh, are you considering doing some uh, clay analysis? We don't have a, a pottery, we have just records. We don't have the vessels, yeah, yeah, so we, right. we cannot we cannot make analysis because we don't know we what we did is just to uh, collect material from publications. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, I, I'm talking. <laughs> we I'm, didn't see. We didn't see, and we didn't touch those vessels. Yes, no, I'm talking about the future. Sorry, I mean if you're uh, <laughs> the future. Uh, in order to make. Uh, analysis that means that we have collaboration uh, with the archaeologists and the excavators who are in charge of those. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there are this type of questions and uh, collaborations, this is something that we, we can see uh, then. Well, this is amazing, really, because uh, when we speak about the Bulgarian part of trace, so we definitely compare everything to uh, the Greek publications. I mean, otherwise, it's extremely difficult to do our analysis. And also, from what I had to, to do in the past for my research, uh, it wasn't easy. So now, at least, this is a great, uh, a great beginning for that. And I'm really envious to the students who are going to um, continue working with that instead of fighting. Uh, actually, actually, uh, students uh, from the Democritus University, they have uh, extensively used the repository for different essays they have to prepare uh, at school, yeah. Oh, that is great. And also for the people from all over the world, you know, because you made this material practically accessible for everyone who is doing researches and cannot come at place or sometimes some publications which are older are not also easier to be found. Or are in languages which are not uh, readable by everyone. This is also mm -hmm. another issue which we still have. Um, the maps you showed are most imp uh, impressive. Do researchers uh, have full Google Maps uh, functionality, example, given zoom measure distance? Uh, yes, thank you for, for the maps. Uh, yes, uh, the map, the, the researchers have uh, uh, these uh, uh, potentials as for the maps that they come out of the repository. But I showed also maps that they were made in the our uh, GIS uh, lab. We have 
lab for uh, archaeological GIS. And those maps were made in the laboratory uh, based on the uh, uh, um, material information and the questions we did uh, to the project. But the rest, the ones that come out of the uh, repository that I showed you um, in some slides, yes, they, they have this functionality. Right. Yes. Well, this is also a great advantage. You can orient. As I said, we, we, we had, um, we were lucky enough to uh, have previous projects that helped us a lot, especially during the pandemic. The ARENA project that uh, did the collection of the uh, bibliography on the archaeological research in northern Greece, we used the part for its and phrase, helped us a lot because during the pandemic we could not go to any a library, so we had access uh, to that based on the previous project. ARENA is uh, an uh, open uh, uh, platform. Uh, and again, the archaeological, the GIS, uh, GIS, uh, archaeological GIS uh, lab uh, was really big help because we can make different experiments with the maps and get some ideas and all that. That's great. And well, yeah, I mean, you can really find your way much easier this way and everyone actually. But that's the idea. The digital tools are to be are there to help our work. They are tools. They are tools. We should not forget that. They just replace earlier tools. Do the maps uh, have layers? The maps made in the uh, lab, yes. The maps that come out of the repository and they are proceeded on the Google Maps, no. But the ones we made, yes, they have layers. Great. Well, anyone more questions? Thank you for a, a most interesting presentation about an impressive and useful research tool. This is Carol Schneier. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I would like uh, to thank everyone for attending this very last presentation for this semester. And so there's been a thank you for completing this uh, series of presentations for us. Um, we would be happy to have another presentation in the future uh, with the next project of yours. Um, we are going to continue with our uh, BEMA seminars, uh, I believe from October. Uh, this year. So all of you who are in our list will receive our emails and you know that we already have a new registration system. So it's very easy to register on our homepage and get the link for the next presentation, which is going to appear. So I hope that this time we'll be able to um, to post the information about the lecturers for the entire semester. So you can, you can really make your plans in advance um, and attend the, uh, the presentations which are interesting for you. And uh, I wish you a great summer, nice holiday, and uh, we hope to see you all again um, in October or hopefully earlier somewhere else.